know, I train two hours a week, which is nothing. I do two one hour sessions a week because that's that's all that I can do from an energy and headspace point of view. You mentioned parenting, which takes me nicely on to my next question, because uh, as a father, I think it's fair to say you're not, you don't have a typical dad bod, right? This is <laughs> no. managed, managed to maintain a physique where most men have, have given up the ghost by now. I'd be really interested to get, uh, get a steer, get an idea of how you've had to change your training, how you've had to change your nutrition, how you've had to change your life based on yeah. uh, Litlands, right? Because it's a completely different kettle of fish. You can't just go off to the gym, do these other things. You're not, you can't come first anymore. How have you right. adjusted to that? And how are you finding the low hanging fruit, the easy wins of maintaining your physique and, and, and still doing what you need to do? So I think it's one of those ones where you, I think you hit the nail on the head is that you don't come first anymore. And that, that ability to just, you know, go to the gym, at the drop of a hat, you know, you can't do it as in, you, you know, you can obviously plan and, you know, my, my wife and I, we, we absolutely operate as a team when it comes to, you know, freeing up space to, you know, if she wants to go to a yoga class, I'll look after the boys, vice versa. And I actually said to her this morning, I said, look, I, I kind of need to get back into running because I feel so unathletic and so unfit um, that I just, I just, I just need to commit to doing it. And I said, look, I'm going at some point over the weekend and for every weekend for the foreseeable, I'm going to need to go for a short run, whether it's round the block, whether it's 3k, 5k, whatever it is. I said, look, I need, I need you to support me on this. She's like, absolutely. That's a great idea. And so it's about just having that commitment. What's changed is definitely the volume as in, you know, uh, running a business, especially through COVID out, out the back of COVID and all the, all the pressures and issues that that had um time is something that i don't have and so it's one of those things and and also energy levels like you, you get tired um and it's one of those ones where trying to make the most of the limited time that you have in a, in a really productive and effective way is probably the the easiest way when it comes to training i train two hours a week which is nothing i do two one hour sessions a week because that's that's all that i can do from an energy and headspace point of view that's why things like going for a run on the weekend will absolutely add some value but it's probably why the nutrition that i'm eating which is pretty much been consistent for the last decade um kind of underpins everything that i do so you know i'm not necessarily i don't bulk anymore i don't do that sort of stuff i you know i diet relatively flexibly but it's always good nutritious food i know how many calories i'm eating i know i know how many grams of protein i'm having um and I, you know, I don't really drink, so that's an, that's also one of those things, which is that you know we talk about low hanging fruits, things that you can, you know, you can do that become habit, and then you don't have to think about them. You know, not drinking, easy. You know, not eating a load of crap, easy. And then having a good sort of base nutrition, and then trying to cram in as much training as you can, is is basically my strategy to to try and get by. <laughs> I think a lot of people would be very surprised to hear that you only train for two hours a week with with two. Mm sessions are you able to do that because of your lifestyle underpinning that as you mentioned the nutrition and prioritizing everything else is that because you're very well trained and you can go in and train in an hour in a way that no one else can unless they've got 20 um, years training history behind them how, how do you kind of explain yeah, it in your head? I, I think it's probably i think it's probably some element of that but i also think that you know i've probably got enough enough credit in the locker over the you know credit in the bank over the last 10 15 20 years where you know i i have I'm, i have quite a high muscle mass right so and i and i always have and i've never really taken time off from that in probably the last decade so what i do is i i go in and i lift twice a week and it kind of maintains that level of muscle mass and then when you know, you'll know this that when it comes to um either reducing your body fat or 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 slacking off a little bit which is probably the thing that makes the most difference visually for someone. So like, I know that when I go to the Maldives for a month beforehand, my diet becomes very tight. <laughs> like there's no wriggle room. My diet becomes very tight and I, my body changes in terms of body fat levels quite quickly because I am quite muscled. So it's one of those things where at the moment, my main focus is to just maintain that muscle mass and keep moving. Um, but and that you, kind of, see, sorry, to, but you won't even dial up the training. Say you, before the Maldives, you can you can get the body composition and the aesthetic effect you want simply by dialing down the diet. Probably not. I, 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 you know, I might add in, or I might have to squeeze in another session here, there, and you know, here when I can. You know, if I'm being completely honest, but it's one of those ones where 
you know, it's not like I go from doing two sessions a week, which is kind of what I'm doing at the moment to doing six, you know, I might go from two and I might better cram in an extra one at some point. Okay. But yeah, the, the vast, the vast majority of the change comes from nutritional tweaking. I think that's probably the, the last thing most people want to hear as well. Right. Because that's the thing they, they yeah. see as being the most difficult thing. An hour, an hour in the gym, you get a lot of upside from that. And that's why we'd always encourage people to train first, right? Cause you're getting more back than just the, 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 yeah, yeah. the muscle mass. It's all of the other mental stuff that's going on. But I guess that's what, what you've learned and how your body best responds is that you can be very, very tight on a diet. Yeah. Move some dials and actually get quite a significant response because of the amount of muscle you just carry anyway is that is that that that's the key if you didn't have that muscle you wouldn't be able to to get those tweaks correct and that's the thing like i walk around at 90 plus kilos so it's not you know i'm not i'm not a small guy and i've kind of never happened for the last 10 years so it's one of those ones where um you know my my resting muscle mass is quite high and then when i come in i lift pretty heavy so like even the numbers that i throw around uh you know it, it's high intensity and low low frequency and it, and it seems to do it's a bit bit mike mensurish you know it's that kind of go in hit it really hard do do what you need to do in that hour to to get a, a really good stress response and then do, do the same thing three days later uh, but it, you can only really get away with it if you've done the 20 years of hard graft before yeah, to get to that position 